Doing two shakedowns a week is getting exciting for me. I've been reading your comments, and while I do not ignore the compliments, I dwell on the criticisms, and I get the feeling that expectations are high, higher than my ability to deliver. That combined with the fact that for now, I realize I only have my words in a studio to compete for your attention versus the road trips and car testing from Alex, Matt, and Chris. So with the logic of panic and self-deprecation, I started writing today's script by filling a milk glass full of scotch. No top shelf brand. I'm not an elite drinker. I just needed something that doesn't smell like brake cleaner fluid. Sitting alone with my scotch-laden 12-ounce tumbler, drinking in the dark, I let the creative process take hold till I got an idea. By the fifth glass, I realized my only hope was to make Shakedown work by talking about stuff I kind of know. So today it's our first Shakedown University on Drive talking sponsorships, and some thoughts on how to find the money to race. I also spoke with the guy managing the new TrueCar.com racing sponsorships to get some outside insights. I was sober when we did the phone interview, so I actually remember what he said. The ex-girlfriend drunk dialing? Not so much. This show is not the end all on selling sponsorship, just an overview to set your mind on a starting path. If you like this first look, we can do more in a future shakedown. Today we'll discuss the following, what you really are selling, why companies sponsor racing, who to target, what you need to do as a racer. That's the start, here we go. Two lines I often say when doing the sponsorship sales thing are first, race cars don't run on gas, they run on cash. This is the hard ass fact. It is the first job of a racer to find the money. Second, sponsorship is really not about the car, driver, or racing. It's about the marketing. Racing provides the theme to do the marketing that a brand or product needs. The decision to spend money on you needs to make business sense for them. That justification gets you the cash. So lesson one, your first job is to convince a sponsor that the marketing they're going to do anyway is best served using racing as the theme. Let's introduce TrueCar.com right now and my conversation with Charles Kim, their motorsport director. Because one of the first things he said was, racing makes your brand cool. And he used the example that no one wears a shirt or hat with just the Target brand on it, yet many would do so when it says Target Racing. But racing is cool as a sponsor reason only works if there's a relevant fit between the personality of the brand, their customer audience, the product itself, and the passion of racing. So you want to help them see that the racing theme is an appropriate platform for them to build their marketing message around. Don't overthink this part of it too much. Just let logic prevail on who to contact and who to not. Selling's a numbers game, but targeting will make it more efficient and less of a time waste. I'm not calling accounting firms or funeral homes to get my sponsorship done, right? TrueCar.com is all about this relevant fit logic as to why they are in racing. The true car business is to offer car pricing transparency to empower shoppers to get a better deal when buying. And true car knows that women feel more intimidated by the dealership experience than most. So true car is sponsoring six female racers, empowering five young guns coming up through the ladder, and Catherine Legg in IndyCar under their women empowered theme. That true car is also a technology company, that racing is all about tech and that all of this is all about cars, well, you can see the multiple relevant connections. Plus, racing sexes up what really is just an online car pricing mathematical algorithm. Okay, enough true car infomercial, but hopefully you get my point about relevant fit for a sponsor. And there are links in the description to learn more about the true car racers. But let's go back a bit about what you are selling. You're selling a marketing platform. So you need to learn or ask what a prospective sponsor is trying to accomplish from a business standpoint. Yes, sell more stuff, but how? Make more people aware of the brand? Well, that's the Red Bull thing. Create a direct connection experience with customers? That's Penske's hospitality suites. Demonstrate a product? Falcon Tire. Build loyalty? Tide detergent still has NASCAR moms buying that stuff, even though they've left the series years ago. Remember, at this point, it ain't about the racing. It's the marketing activation and fit that the sponsor is buying. And we've also just answered the question why companies sponsor racing to do those things I just mentioned. But it's not all marketing logic that gets a sponsor. You need to find someone in the company that actually has a passion for cars and racing. Let's be frank, racing's expensive. It carries a ton of perception baggage. There are way, way, way too many other marketing options easier to justify corporately. 
So as Charles Kim from True Car admitted, it didn't hurt that CEO Scott Painter loves race cars. And it's why I'm struggling with a sponsor pitch right now, because the car guy that was my inside champion is gone. And I'm left debating the program with a bunch of bean counters who take the subway to work. The sponsorship decision goes deeper than just passion, however. True Car Charles also spoke about the value proposition, ROI, return on investment. And you'll have to show that to justify your sponsorship fee. Let's get into those details another time, but for now, simply think, what metrics will show the benefits coming back to the sponsor that are worth it for the cash going out to you? How many people will need to see your program? How many sales? How many subscriptions on their website? Which gets to another reality of sponsorship. Many deals, more than you can imagine, have a business-to-business -business sales reason behind them. Penske was a Mobile One team, but now they're Shell Pennzoil team. Why? Penske got a better deal from Shell to be the lubricant supplier for his car dealerships, Penske Truck Leasing, Detroit Diesel, all of it. Infinity Renault Red Bull is marketing and technical. Genii Capital on the Lotus F1 has a financial deal reason behind the side pod logo. Again, it's all about finding those connections and relevant fits. Let's finish up for today with what it is that you need to do as a racer to get sponsorship. Here's my list, and as it turns out, it's the same list as everything I learned from dating and being married. You'll see. Number one, relationships matter. Respect them, don't be a jerk. Good connections and a good rep go a long way, even in racing. Number two, every good decision is emotional and logical. Passion only never works for long. Number three, if they like you, they'll listen to you. Again, don't be a jerk. Number four, get attention to get noticed. Fifth grade Vanessa never knew I existed. My sponsors to be, they did. Number five, did I mention don't be a jerk? Robbie Gordon runs his own team for a reason. That's not tire smoke behind him, it's burning bridges. Number six, listen. You've been on a date, right? You know what I mean. Same with sponsor pitches. It's not about you, it's about what the sponsor wants. And how do you learn that? Number seven, prove you're worth it. In racing, that doesn't mean you need to win every race, but show you have the potential. I wasn't the captain of the college football team, but still I got... Number eight, know when it's love or when it's flirting. When pitching sponsors, don't waste your time on the tees. Number nine, dress to impress. Look the part of a pro. Conduct yourself as a business person when meeting with a sponsor. Be a pro on track and in the paddock. And number 10, keep your promises. Promise only what you can deliver, deliver what you say, prove that you're the guy. Even when you fuck up, they'll forgive you for it. I know, but am I talking about my racing or my marriage? Okay, after next Monday's studio show, we're off to the Daytona 24 and a shakedown road trip and some Sim Raceway stuff too. There's a link to their blog just to warm you up. Plus, I got an idea for a shakedown auto racing live chat. Would you like to do that? Later.